Now you just get your phone out, you send me some abuse. It's quite simple. I even understand the, the mentality behind it. I think it's unhappiness. I think these are unhappy people and they see me as someone who has a better life than they deserve. I just complain for a living, that's what I do. And that can be upsetting, you know. I, I, I even understand that. I, I had some dark years. You know, I'm glad Twitter wasn't around. I lived in Swindon for five years. <laughs> It's not a bad place, but I think when you're in your mid-twenties and you could live anywhere in the world for your job and you pick Swindon, it is a sign there's something wrong. <laughs> uh, I lived above some garages and uh, I would get drunk at night and had Twitter been around, I think I would have been a troll. I think I would have seen people on telly and sent them abuse just because it's easier to make someone else feel bad than lift your own circumstances, isn't it? So random people, nice people, just like at Nick Knowles, just, are you going to build a house or host a quiz? Why don't you fucking pick one? <laughs> Got off to bed, I told that bloody Nick Knowles. You delete him in the morning, you think, oh, he seems quite nice, and I just cried watching DIY SOS. That's what's happened there. I've lashed out. And he does seem lovely, doesn't he? I even stopped doing that joke for a while because I thought he seems nice, but then he brought an album out, so I brought it back. <laughs> I felt he was provoking me there, to be honest. Nick Knowles has got an album out, if you're unaware, which begs the question, what is wrong with the world? And more specifically, what is wrong with Nick Knowles? Why has nobody close to him just taken him aside and said, I know you like singing, Nick, but don't do that. <laughs> it's no one else's fault. We all sing in the shower. If you want, get your shed converted, turn it into a studio. You know, you've got contacts. I'm sure you could do it for now in a weekend if you wanted to, but... <laughs> don't release an album, mate. I, I honestly think he's gone mad. I think you watch DIY SOS, it's powerful telling, isn't it? I always cry watching it and you think, I realise for Nick Knowles, he spent the last 10 years around people in tears, telling him what a good guy he is. He's just gone insane. He just thinks he's single-handedly keeping the country together here. <laughs> single-handedly reversing Tory Cots, Nick Knowles, and he's seen the music news over the last couple of years. He's thought, well, Prince has gone, Bowie's gone. <laughs> Knowles, he's gonna have to get his guitar out here, I think. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do for the music industry what I did for that three-bed semi in Romford. <laughs> Make it relevant for the people again. I don't understand the logic behind it. But, you know, these men, they send me the abuse, and I don't mind. And it's that thing is, I think they just think my life is better than it is. I think they see me and they think, right, I'll bring him down a peg. They think, I'll do a gig like tonight. I'll come straight off the back of the stage and there'll be a limousine waiting for me there. And that'll whisk me straight off to the Blackpool Ritz. Um, <laughs> you probably don't know about the Blackpool Ritz. Um, <laughs> they wouldn't let your sort in, to be honest. It's, it's not really for you. It's, uh, it's underneath Marks and Spencers. You go... Um, <laughs> You go underneath there and uh, you go to like a big marble top bar like that. It's only famous people in there. I'll go in there. Ed Sheeran will be there. He's just done Blackpool Arena. Um, <laughs> go up to Ed. I go, hi, Ed. You don't know me, but I'm also famous. I go, oh, bloody hell. Of course I know you, mate. How are you doing? <laughs> that's Ed Sheeran. If you haven't heard him talk, that's... That's me, Ed Sheeran impression there. I do about three impressions throughout the gig. I've learned from doing it. It's just easier for you if I tell you who it is first. <laughs> Don't want to leave you hanging, I'll just tell you and then I'll do it. I'll throw a physical clue in if I can, like the guitar. He's always writing into your head. What are you up to? I'm writing a song about these peanuts. <laughs> just put the guitar down and enjoy your life, Edward, please. Everything's going fine. I don't know if you've heard the albums. They're on everything. They really are. Every radio station and advert. Sometimes they're on the breeze. I can be on Headland, miles from anywhere. I just hear, I'm in love with your body. <laughs> He's on the wind. <laughs> Just relax. What do you want to drink, mate? You say, I'll have a porn star martini. I say, barman, three porn star martinis. Just tip the third one on the floor, cos some people are poor. <laughs> And then Ed and I will just drink and talk about all the other celebrities we know. I don't know if you know this, celebrities, we only hang around with each other, because then we've got that to talk about, you know, what could you tell us of life? So Ed will say to me, what are you doing this summer then, John? I say, well, I'm actually going on a canal boating holiday with Diane Abbott and Peter Crouch. <laughs> you wouldn't think we'd get on, would you? But, you know, it's a cracking triumvirate, it really is. We have a right laugh. You know, Crouch is not cut out for barge living, obviously, but... <laughs> He makes an effort for Diane, she fires him up politically, he comes away so alive, and, you know... In return, he's making her quite a deadly six-yard striker, he really is, so... <laughs> it's tit-for-tat, really, and we'll have a laugh. Eventually, Ed gets drunk and just wanders off like that. I say, where are you going to, mate? He says, I've got to talk to girls and see if they're from somewhere I'm going to do a song about them. <laughs> so, OK, don't do Galway, mate, you've already done that one. I go, yeah, cheers, mate, she was from Cleveland's. <laughs> Look forward to hearing line two. 